Welcome to Tube Talk. Welcome back to you, Doug. Big news being St. Peter's losing the final of the first 15 last week. Looked like they made a comeback to one of the last moment. Went over in the corner. It actually looked like they nearly scored in the corner, but... Looked the like final they decision. scored. It's the final Ref decision. doesn't call it. It is what it is. It happens. Yeah. It happens. Disappointing. Disappointing. But hey, spring is here. Spring has sprung. Mm. Cricket's not far away. Which is always exciting. Mm. Exciting news too. What happened to you last week with your bit of the week? It won. Because I'm the best bit of the week picker of them all. 860. 270, I think. And you've got another special one for us later today, haven't you? I do. And I think you're going to quite like it as well. Alright. Let's get into it, mate. Well, before we start, we want to talk about the Go Racing Golf Tournament. Yes, Go Racing Charity Golf Tournament. Uh, you might have got an email about it. It's in Hastings on the 14th of October. Day for the Live Mall Classic. A uh, really, really good cause and a fun day. Uh, raising money for a man with a young family who has an inoperable brain tumour. With someone very close to our hearts. Someone we've known for a long, long time. Um, so, so please come along. It's going to be a fantastic day. A hell of a lot of fun. Charity auction afterwards. Um, contact me, get there, play Ambrose, drink beer, have fun. Mm. Go to the race the next day. Yeah. Last week, and um, it was a week of what ifs and a bunch of close calls and unlucky races. So it? frustrating. Pisses that off a bit, doesn't it? Oh, so much. Anyway, Mark Taffy was an unlucky. Was unlucky last Saturday. Yeah. Just. We weren't very aggressive out of the gates from a good draw and you end up getting right back at the back of the field, got held up, held up, held up. Got out very late, dashed home for third. Should have won. Sim- it's that simple. Should have won the race. He's going well, deserves to notch another one next start. Mm. Sadler's check was also a very was very unlucky at Cambridge. Yeah, look, resuming, really nice staying there, resuming. Big future. Back last just ridden for luck and just couldn't get out, couldn't get out dashed home for third I think if she'd got out, I think she would have been going very close to winning uh, back with confidence next start 7 was also very unlucky, oh. just keeps coming doesn't it oh, just was trucking, trucking same thing as said as Jack couldn't get out, couldn't get out trucking, trucking, looking, last hundred, just Scream time again for third. Should have won. Should have won. Nice filly. Nice filly going places. Anyway, moving on from that misfortune, this week on Friday at the Wyong Cup Race 7, we have two runners. We have Lord Ardmore and Mubarez. So Lord Ardmore is entered for the Wyong Cup over 2,100 metres and also entered for the City of Tattersall's Cup uh, on Saturday at Randwick over 2,400 metres, race four. So just check scratchings to see where he runs. Let's talk about Friday. Uh, lovely barrier draw. He's got a top carry, top weight, but there's not a big spread of weights. Um, Hugh Bowman rides. Um, he'll be in or near the speed the whole way. Um, should be very, very hard to beat. He's in, he's in great form. Um, I think... Um, I don't think the weight will stop him. I think the 2100 metres is fine. If he goes to Sad, that's 2400 metres. And it's the first time we've tried him there since the New Zealand derby. And that, that he was just had no luck there. Three wide, three wide, three wide, had to lead. So um, it's a nice race for him. He drops some weight. Um, it's a really good test to see how he is over that distance. Um, so we'll see where he lines up. Wherever he lines up, he should be very, very competitive. Mubaris is in Wyong Cup. Now, this is a race he ran third in last year. So the distance is no problem. And his last run is a lot better than it seems. His last run, there was just no speed came into the race and it was really hard to make ground. They ran a really fast last 600. And he was closing a bit on the line. Jockey City felt really good. It was actually a lot better than you think. He's got a much better barrier draw. He's got barrier four and I think we can sit a little bit handier than we have been. And I think you'll see him be far more competitive. And I think he's over the odds on Friday. That's why. 
on Saturday at Whanganui, race five, we have Rock Island Line. Yeah, and he was a last start second at uh, at Rickerton, and the horse that won kick on is uh, heading towards the Caulfield Cup, so very good form. He ran second in this race last year, he's got Barrett too, he's got no weight on his back, uh, Kate Hurcock in the saddle, um, he should be very competitive again. He's run some really good placings this time, and, and he, he deserves a win. At Rickerton, race two, we have a Fragical. Fresh up, won two of her last three starts. Uh, the distance is definitely short of her best. So she's trolled up well. I think she's in for a good prep. This should just be a little bit too sharp for her, but wouldn't be surprised at all to see her finishing off nicely. And then race five, Repose Repeater. Um, really good horse. And actually, he won fresh up last year in a listed 1200 metre race, uh, beating Group 1 winner. So he does go good fresh. The 1000 metres is definitely short of his best distance. So it's only a small field though. I imagine him running well. I can see him running in the top three or four. Whether he's sharp enough for a 1000, I'm not sure. I'm not completely convinced on, um, but he is coming up well. And then we're on in Hawkesbury race three, we have Bring the Boom. Bring the Boom. First start, a debutant for us, and we're just showing his trial here, and he runs fourth, and he's a little bit off the leader, but you just watch him through the line, and he just continues to climb into the ground, make ground, make ground. He's by Tarzino, he's an out and out stayer. He starts off at 1400 metres, it's too short for him, he's got a bad barrier draw, he'll get back, and he'll be doing his best work late, um, but we're not going to see the best of him until we get over 2000 metres. But do like him, he's got a big stride, he's got a nice action. Um, as you saw in his trial, he re the further they go, the better he gets. So it's, it's just a starting point for him, but he is one to watch as we get out over more ground. And then at Doombin, race six, we have Oteta. Yeah, he was another horse certainly beat last start. Oh my gosh, the horse in front of him stopped at about the 700. He got caught behind it. By the time he got out, the leaders were 10, 12 lengths in front of him, and he ended up getting beaten less than a length. Um, he drops in distance back from 2200 to 2000. That's the little question mark. Uh, he's probably better going further, but blinkers go on to sharpen him up. He's in great form. He won his start before he was unlucky. He's a, he's a good winning chance, even though we're dropping back in distance. Race eight, we have Hasbro. Yeah, very excited. Hasbro having his first start in Brisbane. One hundred and fifty thousand dollars listed, thirteen hundred and fifty meter race. He goes really well fresh. I uh, was showing you his trial that he had leading into this race. He sat three wide in this trial. Ran second uh, under a nice hold. He's going well. Um, I think he'll run very very well, uh, and I think he's a. Uh, very good each way chance and I wouldn't be surprised if um, he put his hand up on Saturday um, and went a boomer. Then moving on on Sunday at Tadapa race 7 with Miss Ella. Fresh up for a new campaign, very smart three year old filly, a stakes winner, uh, 1200 metres a bit short of her best, um, bad barrier draw. Um, she, oh, I think she probably will need this one. Um, wouldn't be surprised if she showed a lot of cheek, um, but I think she'll improve a lot for it. Mm. Race nine, Stair Bill. Stair resuming second in the Wellington Cup. Uh, 1,500 metres, way too short for him. He'll get out of his ground, he'll be doing his best work late, but he's coming up well, very well, but you'll just need to wait for him you know, to get over more ground. And then race 10, she's at this. Yeah, the Enigma. She runs a placing, then a ducky, then a placing, then a ducky, then a placing. So she ran second last start. She was only the only last chance, and she ran a really good second. So she runs well at T Rapa. Um, not a lot of weight on her back, 52.5 kilos. Uh, the 1,400 metres is, a, I think, a pet distance. She runs up to what she did last start. You know, she can win. She's going certainly going well enough to be winning. She's just just as racing inconsistently, but I think she'll run very well. Mm. Then we move on to bit of the week. And this bit of the week, our picks at Rickerton race six. Yeah, right. Paying how much? Five fifty. 
Yeah, five fifty five dollars. We'll have to see. Nice last start. Third, and you are a man on fire with your bet of the week. I am. So let's see if it gets up again. Going to be discussing a pay rise. Not well, we're discussing a pay rise, and we might even be discussing a permanent role for you and bet of the week. Permanent role. Permanent. Permanent role. Thank you, Douglas. No problem. And we'll see you all next week. Bye. Behind the leaders next is uh, Outfit Filet, then by Invincibile, then Bloom as they head for home. Further away, another Bella, then Miss Madison, Eva Kiara, and out wider, that's all she wrote. Down to the uh, 300 metres, Miss Ella with a very good kick, put two links on them from an Invincibile. Then came Gingerbread, wider out is Outfit, and then followed by uh, down the outside, running on as that's all she wrote. But with 100 metres to go, shut the gate, Miss Ella. She has blown them off the track.